Uh, welcome to today's PSMA Power Technology Roadmap Webinar. Uh, my name is Connor Quinn with Artisan Embedded Technologies, uh, along with my co-chair, Deval Dalal, Van Semiconductor. Uh, we are the chairs for the PSMA 2017 Power Technology Roadmap. The roadmap development is a two-year effort by PSMA to provide trends in power conversion technology uh, looking ahead over the next two to five years. This presentation today will be part of the PSMA Power Technology Roadmap Report, which will be published in conjunction with APEC in March 2017. Uh, the Q&A session will be at the end of the group. Your questions can be posted anytime in the chat window, so feel free to do that uh, during the presentation or at the end. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Ray Ridley of Ridley Engineering US, Ridley Engineering Europe to talk about trends in high frequency magnetics and power supply design. For many of you, Ray needs no introduction, so I'll keep this very brief. Uh, he's a prominent researcher and teacher in the field of power electronics and offers hands-on training to industry and university power supply design engineers. Uh, he combines a unique combination of theory and practical considerations in the area of magnetics, control, and circuit design, and for many years has provided practical, useful power supply design tips on his website at RidleyEngineering.com. Ray received his undergraduate degree from Boston University in 1981, working on high-frequency ferroresonant LLC designs. He later attended Virginia Tech, where he worked in research areas of magnetics, control, conversion, and design optimization. He's well known for his doctoral work in solving the problem of current mode control analysis. Ray is currently president of Ridley Engineering, offering training courses, uh, frequency response analysis instruments, and power supply design simulation software. With that, please welcome Ray. Ray, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Connor. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody at PSMA for setting up this webinar series, uh, making this all possible today. It's very gratifying to see how many people we have signed up. I think uh, finally the world is coming to realize what many of us have already known, that magnetics are the heart of the power converters. It's not about the semiconductors and the controllers. We see tremendous investment there. But unless you get the magnetics right, you're not going to have a power supply. So I'm focusing on that today. When When I present a course in magnetics, sometimes I find it's difficult. What can I say that hasn't been said for about a hundred years? Because magnetics design has been around for a long, long time. And then when I start preparing a course to try and find something new to say, I, I always have to ask myself the question, well, what should I leave out? Because there's so much to say at the same time. So let's proceed with uh, looking at magnetics. And my spin on where I think um, high frequency design has been going I, I see a fairly large slice of the industry with the courses that we offer. I don't always see the absolute bleeding edge of the industry, which is trying to push things in places that we haven't been before, but hopefully I can share some uh, different insights with you. I think recently we've seen a big increase in attention on magnetics in power supplies Partly due, I think, to the investment that's gone into semiconductors. We've had uh, many evolutions in our industry from bipolars to MOSFETs, which created a huge increase in uh, density and technology. And then we had MOSFETs, IGBTs came along. Recently, we've added, I think, silicon carbide, gallium nitride, which have held out the promise of switching at incredible speeds. A tremendous amount of money has been invested there. And suddenly that's kind of turned the attention on magnetics, which haven't necessarily caught up with where people hoped everything was going. I think the hope for many companies are, can we get rid of the magnetics? I certainly know uh, some of the semiconductor people wish they would go away. And uh, if they switch high enough frequency or they push hard enough or they try switch capacitor networks, maybe we can make the magnetics go away. People have been trying to do this for decades, and uh, I'm not sure there's a good answer to that. Anyone that's going to be happy on that one is that, uh, you know, Maxwell works on magnetics and electrostatics, and I don't think we can do good power conversion without the magnetics. So they've been with us a long time, and I think they're going to be with us for a long, long time to come as well. 
Given that, what are the technical challenges for core manufacturers that I see today? We'll go into some details there of what maybe they could be doing to help us. Some of the things they could be doing to help us some more is work on the manufacturer to user interface. I know many people coming into this field have tremendous difficulty in understanding the magnetics data books, understanding what's been written, and trying to choose how they're going to start their design in, in power supplies with inductors, transformers, and all the other magnetics that you need. I think we need some standards in this industry that, that should have been there a long, long time ago but aren't, aren't necessarily being done. I have to focus on just some topics here in magnetics. I could spend an entire hour talking about proximity losses and uh, windings, but I'm, I'm going to choose instead to focus on the saturation levels of materials that we're working with, core losses, which are becoming very, very important as we push to higher frequencies, and redesigning circuits to try and optimize the available materials. Unlike the semiconductors, magnetics have been around, as I said, for over a century now, and a tremendous amount has work has been done, and we're now at the incremental gain stage, I think, in magnetics, where there's not much being done that hasn't been done before. It may be designed these days at 10 megahertz or 20 megahertz or 5 megahertz, but if you look into the past at some of the technologies that were around for 60 hertz and 50 hertz at very high power levels, you'll find a lot of similarities to some of the new designs that are going on today. Magnetics are getting a lot of attention, and I think you can see from these two pictures here why they're getting a lot of attention, and it's not necessarily in a good way. If you look at this first upper left converter here, this is a very nicely designed point of load converter that we're looking at here, and everything has shrunk. The switching frequency has gone up to a couple of megahertz. The silicon has all been embedded into one part, switches, synchronous rectifiers, control circuit. Capacitors have shrunk with the amazing multi-layer ceramics that we have available to us. But the one thing that's kind of sticking out like a bit of a sore thumb is the inductor right here. And that's what's causing, I think, the attention on the on the magnetics is these are going into very dense, the very densely layout fine pitch PC boards and the big gray inductor is sticking out there as old technology and something that seems to refuse to shrink. It's come a long way but not far enough because it's now the biggest component in the circuit. Here is a more conventional power supply for an offline supply and you can see the absolute profusion of magnetics in here there's transformers, inductors, gate drive transformers, a PFC choke right here. Underneath the heat sinks, you can see some more toroids in there for EMI filters. And the majority of this power supply, just like the point of load converter, is magnetics. And this is a little disturbing, I think, to the electronics industry. They look at the magnetics and they say, well, those things have been there forever. They're being hand wound like they always have been. Why haven't you moved on? I think another thing of concern perhaps to uh, management and program planners is we don't have a Moore's law of magnetics. They know where the silicon is going. It's shrinking a factor of two every two or three years, whatever the Moore's law says it should. Magnetics don't seem to have any laws to follow. And they're big and clunky and ugly. I think the worst part is nobody really understands them unless you're a power supply designer that's been doing it for a long time. So it's getting a lot of attention, and that's a good thing. Now, as a designer, you should love magnetics, because it really is the one true piece of hands-on engineering that you can still do. You can get in the lab, you can pick up some wires, and you can make a difference by winding some different magnetics. And that should be exciting to all engineers, because after all, I think we like to build things. What does the industry want? Well, if you look at a motherboard with the uh, toroids sitting on there next to the processor, 
the makers of those processes, they desperately want the magnetics to disappear. So one way to do that, perhaps, is to hide them. And one company, Empyrean, came out, I think it was about 10, 15 years ago, where they put the inductor actually inside the package, the IC package. So no one could see the inductor anymore. And they were tremendously successful with this. It didn't necessarily make it a better magnetic because compromises had to made, be made to fit it in such a tight package. But it did appeal to the users of the part who looked at this and said, well, there's a power converter finally without that old-fashioned magnetic sitting on it. I don't think most of us can do that. We've tried potting them. We've tried putting them in boxes. We've tried making the boxes look very different. But ultimately, leaving the magnetics out in the open where some air can flow over them is the way that we end up going, and that's what you will see on the advanced boards these days.